Tiny House Prepper. Hey everybody, I'm Bill. And I'm Elizabeth with Tiny House Prepper. And you know, we moved into our little RV tiny house here. Can't believe it, almost four years ago. It's three and a half years yeah, and I And I was looking back at our past videos and we did a video uh, when we first moved in that was a tour of our tiny house. And we actually released that on July 4th. 2015. Yeah, we had moved in April of 2015. Yeah. This is July 4th you did the video. That's three and a half years ago. So we thought we would do another tour for you uh, for two reasons. One is the basic structure is still the same, but we've continued to do projects to improve it over the years. And also I realized we have an awful lot of new people that have probably never seen the tour because it was buried way back in our old videos someplace. So welcome to the tour of our RV tiny house. <laughs> beautiful day. Yeah, it's a beautiful winter day. <laughs> now two things that I want to cover right up front, comments that we hear all the time. A lot of people say, well that's not a tiny house, that's an RV. <laughs> yes, it's an RV. Technically it's not a tiny house. But it's not a... Go ahead. What? I say, guess it depends on, on what, how people define tiny house. Well, yeah. a tiny house in like, like this. Um, but it's not about the style of your of your tiny house, it's about the tiny house life experience. Yeah. It's 250 square feet. <laughs> Come live in it for a while and tell me it's not a tiny house. <laughs> yeah, so technically it's not a tiny house, it's an RV. That's why we call it our RV tiny house. There have been um, people living in really small spaces for a long time. Um, but then it became it's become very popular for people to build the cutest little wooden structures with little lofts in them on a trailer frame and we have covered in other videos that they're, they're wonderful not always easy to find somewhere to put but they're, they're great little places and that has become like your basic idea of a tiny house um, but people have lived in 70 square foot apartments in New York City they've lived in sailboats they've lived in houseboats cabins um, sheds. All, sheds, yes, all sorts of recreational vehicles, whether it's on the road or put somewhere permanently. And like Bill said, it's like it's tiny house living. Yeah. And um, we just call it a tiny house because it's really small. But um, there's a lot of different ways that people all over the place are living in very small spaces. And the other th comment that we hear a lot is, well, that's not an RV, that's a trailer. <laughs> well, I, it's... It depends where people, what they're familiar with. I just with. want to ask, have you ever been to an RV dealer or an RV show? If you go to those places, you will see big, beautiful motor coaches, Class A, Class C, motor homes, uh, camper vans, but you will also see travel trailers, fifth wheels, and pop-up tent trailers. Yeah. They're all considered RVs. Recreational vehicles. Yeah, so yeah. anyway. so uh, <laughs> now It's just we get, we get people asking about that a lot. <laughs> yeah, like three or four times a week for years so I thought I'd cover that <laughs> so let us tell you a little bit about the place we bought this piece of property and it had this old dilapidated travel trailer on it and uh, so we decided to renovate it it's been here since 1977 yep. on, you know permanently placed here yep. and then probably 25 years ago um, someone added the little sunroom yeah it's got a sunroom on it so yeah like she said it's been permanently on this piece of property all its life and uh, because of that, we have been able to do a lot of renovation and upgrades that you wouldn't be able to do to a travel trailer that was being pulled, pulled down the road all the time. Right. So um, the lot, did I say this already, is 50 feet by 100 feet. So it's a tiny little thing. But uh, let me just give you a little tour of the lot, and then we'll go inside and we'll show you the trailer, the, the tiny house, <laughs> the RV tiny house. Okay. <laughs> So here's the basic RV, which is a 32-foot RV. As you can see, it's set up permanently. It's got uh, uh, skirting around it. And then there's the sunroom that was added later. And the, uh, the trailer is 250 square feet, and the sunroom adds another about 100 square feet or so. And we are hoping someday to get the trailer painted or sided right. or something. <laughs> when we moved in, it had a tiny little falling apart shed right here, and I tore that down, and I built this shed. This is, this is 200 square feet. It's almost as big as our, as our house. And what we want to do eventually is to match the siding on the, on the uh, trailer with the siding on the shed so it'll, look, it'll all match. See that roof peak right there? 
that's not ours. <laughs> now here's our place from the other angle. And as you can see, we are very close to our neighbor who has a mobile home. And that little peak that you see, that looks like it's ours, it's actually the peak of our neighbor's house right there. And from the, from the other side, it looks like it's part of our house. One of my favorite things is this little place right in here in the front where I have this beautiful, healthy, big, soft pine tree. And this is an oak right here. And over there is one of the few uh, blue spruces that didn't get killed by a disease that came through killing a bunch of blue spruces. But this is so nice and shady in the summer, and I love these three trees out here. It's just one of my favorite parts. I really enjoy them a lot. Okay, shall we go inside? Okay, let's go inside. So here we are in the living room. Um, there's been several things that we've been able to set up here that I've been really grateful for. We had to design things pretty carefully. One is I still love to be able to have my keyboard here. This is a real good um, you know, keyboard for me to be able to use. Um, and so Bill put these brackets here and we just set it up here and for me to be able to use it I can just lift it down onto a stand or even onto our little tables we eat on and I can use it to play. This is our all-purpose everything happens on this desk. It's got a computer on there now and our printer. And we have to use this desk for everything you can imagine. So it's a real all-purpose for us. Um, Bill very carefully measured and built these shelves in for food storage for our Thrive Life cans. Um, so we have it right here handy in the house. And um, put me in this just beautiful shelf here, which I just love. And um, so um, hang our mugs along here. A few Christmas lights, some more of the food. Um, the instruments that we don't want to have get really cold are back behind the chairs like the guitars and stuff so that they stay in a safe environment um, which is better much better for them so um, anyway yeah this is welcome to my little living room I'm extremely grateful to be able to have these recliners in here because of the little bump out that Bill rebuilt and um, so works out really well for us my little study corner here so anyway that's the living room we got a kick out of it one time because someone was wondering why we have so many cans of paint in our living room if we're short on space. <laughs> but um, I use the, the Thrive Life freeze-dried food for cooking all the time. There were smoothies. So it's very handy having it right here in the room with us <laughs> in the living room. So what do we do for heat? Well, we have this really neat little cubic mini wood stove. Tiny little thing. It heats our entire place for the entire winter with just a half a quart of wood which is pretty amazing. Nice and toasty in here, and, uh, <clears throat> but it needs some help. Because it doesn't burn for very long. It only burns about two hours or so and then it's out and we have to keep stoking it. So if you want to find out more about this, I did a playlist of a, quite a few videos about this. You'll see a link below uh, to the playlist for the Cubic Mini Wood Stove. Now when we first moved in here, there was a propane uh, furnace right here. It was a closet here. And the furnace, big, went all the way to the ceiling. And it pumped uh, hot air through vents in the floor. But it didn't work. And the guy we bought it from had put in one of those propane um, ventless heaters. He had it attached to the wall right here. And <clears throat> It was, it was an old ratty thing, so we bought a new one, same thing, a ventless propane. We used that for a while, and it worked really well to heat this place really well. But a lot of people don't know this. Propane does not produce carbon monoxide. Otherwise, you couldn't use it in your range stove in your kitchen. It actually produces uh, water vapor. So when we used that thing, it was nice and toasty warm, but it was so humid in here, and we had all kinds of problems with condensation, which is already a problem in an RV, and we had really bad problems with that. So I was able to replace it with electric baseboard heat. Now the typical RV has a 30 amp or a 50 amp uh, service. 
because we're set permanently on our property here and we're uh, wired in permanently to the electric service I was able to actually upgrade that to 100 amps so that we could put in electric baseboard heat and you can see here that I have just regular baseboard electric baseboard like you would see in a house here underneath of the desk and then over here on the other, th other side I have what's called an e-heater we got this from eheat.com or eheater.com I'm not sure which we really like this you see the little red light there it shows that it's on it stays cool in the front so you can actually put stuff up against it like I've got my uh, my guitar there but and the heat only comes out of the top and so it works really well so what we do is we use this stove whenever we're here and we just you know feed it all day long and we burn it sometimes as much as 18 hours a day and then when this goes out at night or if we're gone or on weekends or something like that then the electric baseboard kicks in as our backup heater and it works really well uh, last year we didn't have this working and we were paying as much as 350 a month in the winter for heat for all, all electric when we use this we only pay about hundred dollars a month for, for the electric heat because it uh, you know it only works for a few hours at night when this goes out so works really well for us now when we bought this place it was truly a mess it was not livable it needed a lot of renovation so we did I did a complete renovation of the whole thing including adding a lot of extra things uh, to make it much more winter worthy so we're not going to talk about all the renovations that we did here but I have a playlist of all that covers all of that and there will also be a, a link below uh, in the description for the playlist of all of the renovations that we did if you would like to see that so then we come into the kitchen um, this used to be on this side over here a, ha a place with a table with a couple of chairs but I was really glad Bill did all the renovation he did I now have a, a, a area of counter here that's low enough to kind of sit right at um, we have our covered cat box under there and it actually works really really well and um, it, it, it just has been fine here more mugs um, and we put in a dishwasher here. This is a regular dishwasher, which I'm extremely thankful for. Um, this stove is the only thing that's like the original appliance that was in here before. Not my favorite color, but it's a good hard work and a little propane stove. I do like it. So we were able to put in our microwave, and, and Bill put a whole new counter in here. These are new um, under cabinets here that we were able to get. And um, so I have appreciated it. It's all actually worked out really well. We have like an apartment size fridge. It's a regular refrigerator, but it's apartment size. Um, I can do regular cooking in here. It's been a really practical little kitchen. You'll have to watch our tiny house uh, kitchen dance sometime, our video. <laughs> so, um, you see we've got, I put these in here. It helps to give more room for putting dishes and so, and then um, this used to have coats in it, and thankfully Bill was able to make this into a pantry. And one thing I really love is he built this all in for me for um, herbs and spices and some medicine. It's, it's been great. So, yeah. Kitchen works out just fine. Another thing I'm really grateful for is that in this spot where there used to be the, um, the old furnace that Bill took out, we now have been able to put in this washer-dryer combo. And, um, oh my goodness, I was afraid this thing would seem kind of small, but it does wonderful regular loads. And I'm quite grateful to have a washer and dryer in here. Should have seen us getting this thing in this place, but very thankfully it did fit. <laughs> so from the kitchen, we come into our hall. See our nice hall that goes right into the bedroom where we have the kitty on the bed? By the way, my sister made that quilt. I love it. But this is actually our bathroom. And when the door's shut, it forms a very nice normal bathroom. I'm very grateful we have a regular shower tub. Um, I'm, I'm grateful to not have a, what they call it, a wet bath? What do they call that? Yeah, mm. where you have to sit on the toilet to shower off. It's a regular bathtub. Um, it's small, but it works. Um, Bill put in a new toilet. Um, and so we've got nice sink area over here and it just works out really really well when these doors shut it forms a very comfortable bathroom one thing Bill did that is really smart um, our cat has very strong Maine Coon paws and he loves to try to open doors 
and um, we were concerned a little bit that he might be or close them or close them yes <laughs> and um, we were concerned that he might when sometime when we're not home uh, managed to shut a door and lock himself away from his water and his box and food and everything so Bill if you listen to this okay, Get into that. okay here we go um, he put magnets see and it holds the door open there's one over here too you can hear it anyway that way the doors are definitely held open um, and uh, that makes me feel much better that he'll be able to definitely get to his water so anyway that's our bathroom and it's been really nice and it has worked really well now a lot of people have actually have questions about our water system our plumbing here the gray tank and the black tank were removed long before we bought the place and it's just like a house it just goes right into the sewer sewer comes up under the ground underneath of the house underneath of the trailer and the toilet is a regular uh, residential type toilet it's not a pump toilet or anything like that and the toilet and the sinks everything goes right down into the into the sewer under the house and then same with the uh, with the water supply rather than using a hose outside like you would to connect for a, a mobile uh, RV we actually have the water comes in underground and comes up underneath the trailer and then it's hooked right in to the everything permanently hardwired hard plumbed um, just like a house would be so we don't have any of those issues of you know is it cold is the gray tank gonna freeze in the winter we don't have a gray tank now for the hot water heater a typical RV has a propane hot water heater and it's usually three gallons or five gallons and you have to take a short shower because you run out of water there's a big long recovery time we just got a regular residential electric hot water heater it's if I remember correctly I think it's 28 gallons it's a great big fat thing and short and it's actually underneath of the counter right back in here under this microwave you have to pull the stove out to get to it but we can do that because we have the uh, 100 amp electric service that I put in so it's just wired right into the power and we, we, we've never run out of water you know 28 gallons for two people is fine so it works real well for us actually when we moved in here there wasn't a water heater anywhere it wasn't even here and uh, it took me a while to figure out that that's where it's supposed to be but it would have been a propane you know one of those little propane heaters so I just put in that electric one and it works works great so then we go from the bathroom into the throne room for Leo the cat <laughs> this is our bedroom and My as you, holiday bed room yeah as you can see that's that's the bed that's it that's all that's in there this is a <laughs> this is a standard full-size bed we can't even fit a queen and uh, fortunately there's a little bit of room here on the end because I sleep against the wall and I don't have to climb over her to get out I can just slide down and come around this way uh, when it, when we first moved in there was one light switch right here and that was it it was kind of awkward so when I was doing the renovation I put another switch over here so as you can turn the light on when you come in from outside and that other switch is for the sunroom we'll go out there in a minute I also put another switch right there that works these lights which is really cool because if I'm in the back and I can't get out I can turn the light off and on without trying to crawl over her <laughs> so I actually built the frame for this bed and you can see what I've done down under here I put a drawer in a drawer she needs this to climb up on because the bed's tall then a little space here where we can store uh, shoes and things now we are also preppers so I built into the storage or built into the bed some food storage this is food rotation racks we use mostly Thrive Life freeze-dried food but there are also some things that we use from the grocery store and this allows us to store them very easily under here uh, Progresso New England clam chowder this is actually gluten-free it's one of the few that Elizabeth can eat so we have a few of those things and the food storage racks 
you put the new ones in the top and then you take the oldest ones out of the bottom so you're always rotating your stock. So we're real happy with this. And then we each have a closet. Here's mine. Here's hers over here. And hooks for robes. And here's another electric e-heater that heats the back bedroom. It's got its own separate thermostat right there. So it's very co cozy, very functional, works for us. Oh yeah, when we got it, when we bought it, they had windows like this all the way around the whole thing, which would be really nice if you were in Florida and you could open up all the windows and have all that air going through. But we live in the Northeast. We, we have 10 below on a regular basis in the winter and those windows are very cold and drafty. So I eliminated all the windows across the back and the ones over on this side, put in regular walls and insulated it all so it's actually much warmer in here now. Works much better. This is Leo the cat and his throne room. So now from the bedroom we go through the back door of the RV into the sunroom. So here we are in the sunroom and it is cold out here right now. We're only going to be in here for just a moment. This room is very usable for us um, in the spring and fall and during the less hot days of summer. Um, it can be really nice in the evenings it's often really nice. So I just go around real quick. This was Bill's grandmother's china cabinet. I'm very glad to still have it. Um, the cat's trying to open the door. <laughs> he likes to open that door. So we're grateful that this room, um, you know, it isn't protected from temperature, but it's, it's, it's you know, a nice safe place. And um, so that was, that was a tiny cabinet I was able to pull in. Um, we have really loved this leather chair and, and couch. Um, and we're very glad to be able to kind of hang on to it and we can enjoy that when the weather's nice out here. Um, I just brought that tiny cabinet from my mom's. So, in a beloved rocking chair that was a gift for my daughter and her husband. So, anyway, this is a real pleasant room um, to be able to use when the temperature is pretty good. So, we're glad to have it. So, this is our sunroom, and sorry the light is not right here. There's just <laughs> too many windows to control. And like Elizabeth said, it's a three-season room. It's not insulated. We can't use it year-round. can't use it in the winter because we live in the, in the northeast, and we have regularly 10 below here. And also in the middle of the summer, the sun blazes sometimes and it's too hot. But we really enjoy using it when we can. And uh, I get uh, suggestions all the time about things that we can do to insulate it so that we can use it all the time. But the way it's built, that's just not really possible without basically completely tearing it down and starting over again. Uh, we did a video that discussed that and all the different options and why they don't work. And It's all just basically plexiglass storm windows all around. That's all there is. And putting up blankets or something in front of the windows just is not going to be uh, <clears throat> do anything when it's 10 below outside. <laughs> right. We, we really have racked our brains um, to think of any way to make this more usable year-round. And nothing so far has really worked out. There's a lot of reasons. Yeah. I mean, part of it is that this is sitting, it's really pretty well built. <laughs> it has been, it's sitting flat on the ground. And the, um, the RV heaves. It, it shifts with the ground. This doesn't. Um, and so, well, this does too, but they shift at different rates. Yeah, race. okay, they shift differently. Yeah. And so anything we would try to do that would, like, a roof that would, like, attach more, I don't know, they're just, they're, they're actually, they actually move surprisingly separately, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. yeah. That's <clears throat> just one factor. So, you know, it just gives us an extra 100, 100 square feet of place to keep our beloved, you know, leather couch and, <laughs> yeah. and recliner. And we use it when we can, we love it when we can, we keep our, you know, it allows us to keep a lot of things that we wouldn't be able to otherwise, yeah. because it's always dry in here, even if it's cold. <laughs> well, and, you know, the china cabinets I'd like to pass down to grandchildren someday, and, right. you know, so, yeah. Right. yeah, it's nice to be able to do that. So, there's the tour of our most recent updates of our RV tiny house, and if you haven't seen the tour before, there you go. If you, right. if you have seen it, then you've seen a few of the upgrades. Right. People just really kept wondering and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you know, uh, weren't sure exactly 
how our house was placed or where we were or anything. So <laughs> we wanted to give people a chance to kind of see what, what it is that we're talking about here. So thanks a lot for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up. That helps a lot. And of course, subscribe so you can see all the other great things we do. And like <laughs> I said, down below there will be a lot of uh, links to playlists about the, the stove, about the, uh, the renovations that we did, other things like that. So check it out. Yeah. And I should have put a coat on. Yeah, yeah, it's cold out here. <laughs> so anyway, Alrighty. thanks for watching. You'll be blessed. Love you guys, and we will see you soon.